Hi, in today's video, we're going to touch a subject that we're going to discuss in length in the future. And the subject is differential equations. Basically, differential equations are equations in which we have derivatives. Now, what you see over here is an example of the simplest differential equation possible. So, we have that y of x is equal dy dx. In other words, we could say that the function is equal to its derivative, or in other words, the slope of the function is equal to the value of the function. And look, even though that you might heard the term differential equation for the first time, I would assume that you know the solution to this one, right? Because we know very, very well that if y of x is e to the power of x, then dy dx is e to the power of x, right? This is the solution that we know. We know uh, how to differentiate a natural exponential function, so e to the power of x. Or in other words, we know what is that solution. And look, this is an incredible, incredible feature of natural exponential function. That the value of the function is always equal to the slope of the function, which means that if we plot natural exponential function, we can always simply read what is the slope of this function at any given point by looking at its value. This is how we know that when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1, which means that the slope of this function at 0 is equal to 1, which is a very convenient uh, thing for us. However, the question is, is it the only possible solution to this differential equation? So, is there only one function that can do this? Is there only one function that has, uh, that has the same value as its derivative. And right away, somebody might say, well, I have an idea for the second solution. Because if y of x is 0, then dy dx is 0 as well. Okay, so maybe we found a a second function, y equals to zero, a constant that is always equal to zero. However, if we think about it, this still might be a special case of e to the power of x. Why? Well, let's look at the graph, right? We see that when we, of course, put bigger and bigger number instead of x, y is growing in the middle. However, if we put smaller and smaller value instead of x, y is getting smaller and smaller as well. How small? Well, of course, this is very problematic, but in circumstances like that, we can always resort to limits. And limit with x approaching negative infinity out of f of x is 0. Right? So, if this is the case, then we could say that in the limiting case of, uh, uh, of x going for negative infinity, e to the power of x is 0, which means that the derivative 
of e to the power of x, which is e to the power of x, is zero as well. Look, this actually means that the case, uh, that the solution zero equal to zero, can be thought of as a special case of e to the power of x, with x approaching negative infinity. Okay, so this would mean that there is no other possibility uh, for the solution to this differential equation. However, let's embark a little bit on trying. And look, usually we very often, when we model things, we use polynomial functions. Why? They are extremely possible. If you have very big polynomial functions with many terms, you can basically get any shape you want. Right? Of course, uh, that confirms into the definition of a function. So, maybe we could try to find out whether there is a polynomial function that will be a solution to uh, this differential equation. Okay, so because we do not know what this function is, maybe we could start guessing. Okay, look, usually polynomial functions start with some constant, right? Let's say we've got some constant c. However, if y of x has component c, then dy dx gonna have zero over here. Well, then unless c is zero, this doesn't work. Which means that maybe not every constant here is a good choice. Okay, so if not, if not c, if not c, let's start another case. How about x? Right? If we would now, if we would have x in the original function, this would mean we need to have derivative equal to one, right? So this implies that if the two need to be the same, we need to have one over here, right? But, uh, and we clearly see that after differentiation one is gonna turn to zero, x is gonna turn to one. So far, so good. However, if we have x over here, well, we need to have x over here. Okay, let's go further. If we have x over here, over here we need to have a component that will turn into x. How can we find it? Well, I can say simply 1 over 2 times x squared. Right? One, oh, if, if I differentiate this, I'm going to get x. But if the 1 over 2 x squared is here, 1 over 2x squared must be here. And this is telling us that we need to have another term that after differentiation will give us 1 over 2x squared. So this term needs to be 1 over 2 times 3 to the power of 3, right? So 3 goes over here, right? It turns into 2. We've got 1 over 2x squared. Works perfectly. Okay, let's go one step further. Because if this component is here and they need to be the same, then we need to have this component, this term over here. And again, if we've got term like this as a derivative, we need to 
have a term that after differentiation is going to turn into this term. So look, now we need to again increase the power of x and multiply uh, the product that we've got over here by one more element, which is 4. Okay, and of course, if this component is over here, well, it needs to be over here as well. But then, if this component is over here, we would have to, we would need to have a component that is going to give us this derivative. I hope that you might guess at this moment that this component would be 1 times, uh, I'm sorry, 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 x to the power of 4. Right? And now, if this term is over here, it also needs to be over here. But if this term is over here, here we need to have a term that is going to give us such a derivative. So the next term we should have over here should be 1 over 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 x to the power of 6 and of course this means that over here we need to have exactly the same component. And I hope at this moment you see that we are getting here actually a very predictable next terms of this series. So the question might be, can I somehow write all those terms in a little bit more compact way. Okay, so for example, we see that there is x everywhere. So the first thing I'm going to do is maybe I'm going to turn 1 into x. Because 1 is x to the power of 0, right? Then we see that also each x is into some power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write x as x to the power of 1. Okay, then I, I have a term 1 over 2 x squared, right? However, the next term is 1 over 6. However, this is 2 times 3. Or maybe the same as 1 times 2 times 3. So, I could write it as 3 fourths x to the power of 3. And look, we can see that actually all the terms here confirm to this convention. Because 1 over 2 is 1 over 2 fourths. Here, I could just write 1 over 1 force, and keeping in mind that 0 force is 1, all the terms have a number force and the same number in the pop. Okay? So we see that each next consecutive term over here could be written as Right? So we've got a number, force, x to the power, the same number. So, 11th number n, actually n plus 1, be, uh, because we start with 0, would be 1 over n force times x to the power of n. Okay, so look. We actually got it. We figured out a. Uh, we actually figured out a series of terms, a polynomial that 
will give us that will be equal to its own derivative. Of course, there are some questions remaining. How many terms should I have? Well, this process could be repeated, should be repeated independently, right? So n should be going for infinity as well. So what we get over here is infinitely long polynomial, right? With n plus one terms that is characterized by the property that if we differentiate, we're going to get exactly the same term, the same expression. Okay, and this term, this, this polynomial actually looks very nice in a way that we see that there is some consistency over here. It is easily reproducible. So the question remains, now, maybe we have already seen this, this, uh, uh, this polynomial somewhere. And I hope you remember that we did. Look, I hope you remember Maclaurin series. So when we make an expansion around zero, so this is a technique right that allows us to transform any function under certain conditions of course into into polynomial form right based on the value of the function at zero and based on the value of the derivatives of this function at zero okay and look once we compare the series, the, the polynomial that we got with the Markleian series, we clearly see some resemblance. There is only one thing that does not fit over here. They are identical except for the presence of f f of 0, f prime of 0, f b sub 0, and so forth, and so forth, until uh, nth derivative of function f evaluated at 0. Okay, so maybe there is a connection. And actually, maybe this connection is even somehow related to the number e. And let's think about it. Look, if our function would be f of x equal to e of x, then we know that each consecutive derivative of this function is going to be equal to e of x, right? If we differentiate e to the power of x, uh, we get uh, we get uh, e to the power of x. Doesn't matter how many times we're going to differentiate, right? Then we can do this one more important thing. This one more important thing is that e to the power of 0 is 1, which means that if I'm going to plug in here uh, 0, this is going to turn into 1 just as well as each of the consecutive derivatives. So, if the function we are expanding is e to the power of x, what we get as a result is exactly the same series that we just deduced over here. So, is it a good news or is it a bad news? Well, bad news is that with all our efforts 
to find a polynomial function that actually can, uh, will have exactly the same derivative uh, uh, as, as it is, uh, we've actually, all we did is that we ended up at E, right? So we see that when we find a function, when we find a polynomial that starts to resemble E, and of course, the more terms, the higher the resemblance, uh, right? We end up with one very simple conclusion. The only possible solution to the differential equation we set out at the very beginning, so y of x equals dy dx is y of x equal to e to the power of x. Of course, we can use the polynomial we did as a very good approximation if n would be infinite, uh, a perfect one. However, still, we are ending up with e to the power of x. And again, this shows us how important and how, and how useful e is. And we, this also explains why we see e everywhere in all our problems. Okay, thank you for your attention and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.